And um, so hearing God's voice is something we can all do. It's definitely scriptural. It's been in the Bible from the very beginning. God speaks. He spoke in the very beginning. And he's continuing to speak today. Uh, Hebrews says that God has spoken to us in times past through prophets in different ways. But uh, in these last days, he's spoken to us through his son. It's very interesting. It's, it's not just he's speaking to us through his son, but he's shouting to the world through his son, a uh, visible demonstration of what Jesus did upon the cross. And we're getting ready to celebrate Easter this weekend. And this is God's shout to his world that, hey, hey world, I so loved you that I gave my only son for you, that if you believe in him, you would not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, John uh, 3.17 says this, that God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the Son, the world might be saved. And that's amazing love. And so God has shouted that. <laughs> he shouted uh, that salvation is found in His Son, just as this healing and, and being able to hear God and to encourage others uh, is also uh, spoken through the Son today. So primarily, the Holy Spirit is, is the one who is now in the earth. Jesus went to heaven and He received from the Father the Holy Spirit and poured forth upon this planet. And until he returns, this is how he primarily speaks to us, is through the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is given to those who believe. He's given to those who seek, ask, and knock. <laughs> the word says, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so uh, he's a good, good father, and he wants to give us more of the Holy Spirit so we can indeed hear him and then have the power uh, to act on what we hear. And sometimes that power is demonstrated as we act, as we act on the very things he tells us to do, especially for other people. So he speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. And the way that we can hear the Holy Spirit is that we can see what the Holy Spirit is doing through seeing we can hear. <laughs> we can see what the Holy Spirit is doing. When we see, we hear. The other way we can hear the Holy Spirit is that we do hear. And sometimes that uh, hearing is intuitively, is inside of our, our hearts, or we, we hear a whisper that sounds like us, but we uh, through practice we discovered it's not, it's his voice. And the other way that we can hear God's voice is the things we feel. Sometimes you can walk into a room and you can f feel things uh, that are, aren't right, or you can meet someone and have a sense in your heart that there's something that you should share with that person, or maybe there's an illness in that person. Maybe you have a pain that you didn't have before, and suddenly you feel a pain, and you're looking around trying to find out who has the pain so you can pray for them. So seeing and hearing and, and, uh, and also feeling and also knowing, just that intuitive knowing that God has spoken, and that's how God speaks. So he speaks through sight, through hearing, through intuitiveness, and feeling. That's how he speaks. He speaks to us in those ways. And uh, usually it's, uh, for me, you know, uh, it's all four usually now. But when it first began, when I first began to hear God's voice, it was just a gentle knowing, an intuitive knowing uh, something about a person. Usually it was a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, which turned into a prophetic encouragement. That's how God spoke through me. So God does want to speak, and uh, he wants to speak to you. And with practice, you can learn to hear his voice. And I would encourage you just to check out John 13 uh, through 16. Uh, John 13 through 16, uh, Jesus talks a whole lot about the Holy Spirit, that he's another, another helper is going to come, or another one just like Jesus is going to come. And he's going to guide us and lead us into all truth. And uh, so uh, I just want to share that with you, that uh, if you're hungry, <laughs> if you're hungry to hear God's voice, he will speak to you. Uh, I'll give you an illustration that I thought was really, really great. Uh, there was, I went to Scotland and there was a guy sitting in a men's group and uh, he was trying to hear God's voice. And someone had told him to go into a room with, with a Bible and sit in the room with the Bible and read the Bible and just be quiet and that he would hear God's voice. And so, so I asked the question, uh, how's it working for you? <laughs> was it working very well? So I asked him, I said, where do you, where do you feel God's presence the most? And he says, when I go out for a walk with my dog, when I go for long walks, I'm just, I'm just so aware of God's presence. I, said, I told him, I said, listen there. Listen at that place, for that's where God's probably going to be speaking to you. He's going to probably be speaking to you to the things you see in nature, or just as you're walking, he may just begin to commune, commune with you through your heart and your mind. Anyway, that's just some tips on how to hear God's voice. And uh, I'm going to do a couple of others of these, a couple more, just to try to 
uh, unpack some of the, <laughs> the four ways that we hear. So uh, God bless you today. And uh, I just pray, I just do, I pray that from today, there'll be a hunger in your heart that you would somehow desire to hear God's voice and that you'd be surprised on how clear that God speaks uh, to you. When you say, God, speak to me, <laughs> speak to me, God. I pray that he, I know that he will hear you. And I also know that the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to you through the things you see, through the things you hear, through the things you feel, and through the things that you know. <laughs> hey, have a great day. It's Easter time. Celebrate Jesus this week and his resurrection. Bless you guys.